Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Gyne Cube, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about why you should split your daytime columns into a date and a time column. Stay tuned. Daytime columns. No matter how many times I tell people you gotta split them, you need to make two columns, or if you don't need that time column, don't pull it in. People just don't listen. And I'm always on the end of some email thread where somebody's complaining about the size of their model, and it typically leads back to a daytime column. All right. So that's why I'm doing this video. I had a call with the customer and the guy was like, hey, Patrick, my model's too big and can you help me make the model smaller? And I said, all right, let's get that studio. Wait, 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 wait. Enough of all this talking. Let me walk you through the scenario. Let me show you the steps that I showed him and how we reduce the size of his model. So you guys know what I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. All right, so what, what he had was, he said, all right, Patrick, I got this model. It's got about 2 million rows in it. It's got about 2 million rows, so maybe a little more. And I just think the model size is too big. I was like, all right, let's take a look at the data. So he had a fact table. So you can see this is the fact table. And he had a daytime column. He had some other surrogate keys. And then he had some other values on that, that uh, fact table. I was like, all right, well, why, why didn't you split this out? He's like, well, because it just works this way. This is what I need. And I was like, yeah, but it probably doesn't give you the flexibility you need. And he was like, well, it kind of doesn't. And I was like, all right, well, let's see. Before we do this, let's take a look. Let's analyze this model and really see um, where the space is being uh, utilized at. So we open up that studio and we'll connect to his model, right? And then if you have the one of the latest versions, you click advance and you can choose view metrics. So click view metrics, click on the columns tab here, and you can see just, I mean, almost immediately that the most of the size of this model is taken up by that daytime column. You can see 99.98% of, of the model size is consumed by this column. And if you go to the summary, you can see this model is 90 gig, 90 megs. So most of that 90 megs um, is associated with that daytime column. All uh, right, he was like, okay, so what do I do? I was like, split them, split them into a date and time column. He's like, oh, oh, I got it, I got it. I was like, no, wait, 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 you gotta do more than that. He's like, no, I got this, Patrick, I got this, all right? And so let me show you what he did. He went to his model and he actually split out the date and time. And he's like, I know this is gonna make it so much smaller. And I was like, I don't think so. He's like, well, let's 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 test it out. Let's go back to DAX Studio and test it out. I was like, okay, let's do it. So we went back to DAX Studio. There's a little icon all the way at the top where you, that allows you to open a new query window. So you click that and we connect it to number two. So I'm gonna connect to number two and I'm gonna say view metrics, and I'm gonna right click on one of these queries and choose new horizontal tab, just so we can see them at the same time, right? And so the first thing I did was we went to summary on both, and I was like, look, this is your original one, 90.82 megs, and here's the new one, 90.32, you're not getting much savings back. And he was like, what, what do you mean? I was like, well, let's look at the columns. Let's look at the columns. So we took a look at the columns and I was like, look, it's because the cardinality on that 2 million row table hadn't changed that much, right? It's a very slight variation between those, which results in a very slight variation between the size of the column itself and how much of that database is consuming. Frankly, it's there's no difference. He sat there and he's like, oh my God, how are we gonna fix this? And I was like, calm down, let me show you. Let me show you how to fix this, all right? And so all you need to do, wait, wait, no more talking, Patrick. Go back to the laptop and show us. Okay, let's go over to this new file and let me show you what we did, right? So what we did was, what I did was I remodeled this. So the very first thing I did was I went to his fact table and I converted the date and the time to integers. So I just kind of stripped out the slashes and the colons and I made, you know, just a, a integer out of those values, which are surrogate keys. Some people like to call them smart keys. And then I import it or you create your date and your timetable. So you can see I have my date table and my timetable and I established a relationship between those corresponding keys. Right. And if you want to see what those tables look like, let me go over to my 
my date table, you can see I have my date key and I have the actual date, the month number, the month name and you know, on and so forth. And on the time I broke this down, I actually have the time key, the actual time key, hour, minute, second, the timetable, the number of rows in your timetable is going to depend on the granularity of your timetable. Maybe you need to go down a minute. Maybe you need to go down a second. Maybe you need to go down a millisecond. That table will grow and shrink depending on the granularity. And something else you may notice is that the cardinality of, you know, the actual time column or your time key may be, it's going to be equal to the number of rows in that table because that's the, the distinct value. And you can determine if you need that actual time or not, because you can always derive it from the other values in the table. All right. Back to the, back to my laptop. All right. So after I built these out and I established the relationships, I was able to create a really flexible report. So you can see right here, I'm using the date. If you look at the the uh, the values on the axis, I'm using the month name, the actual date, the hour, the minute. And now I have this drill path where I can go drill into September and it's showing me the actual dates. I can drill into the, the peak of September and then it's showing me the actual hours. I can build into I can drill into the actual hours. I can toggle between a.m. and p.m. Um, and then drill in and then it will show me the actual uh, minutes. Then I can go down into the actual seconds. This is just great. He was like, Patrick, this is great. This is awesome. This is what I need. He goes, but but Patrick, does this really the number one question? Does this really reduce the size of the model? And I was like, of course it does. Let me show you. Let me show you. All right. So we headed back over to DAX Studio. I'm going to go ahead and close this. That's number one. We're definitely not doing number one. What I'm going to do is open a connection to the new one where the where the model is, right? The nice, clean model. And then I'm going to say view metrics and I'm going to do my horizontal group again. And I'm going to click on columns down here and then let's compare it. Let's take a look, right? Look at the difference in the cardinality. Look at that, right? But look at the difference in the size, 94 million to 5 million. Are you kidding me? And it still accommodates for a large percentage of the database, but it's not 99% compared to 35%, right? So it's significant, definitely significant. But the telltale story is, let's look at the summary and see if the actual size of the model is really reduced. Summary, summary, 90 megs, 15 megs. What? Just the percentage of the original size. This is crazy. He was blown away. I was happy. He was convinced and we were ready to move on to our next challenge. What do you guys think? Are you using uh, surrogate keys? Are you using date and timetables in your models? I'd love to know. Are you running into any challenges? Please let me know. Let's continue the conversation. Where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.